From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. One more week at least about wearing these glasses. I hope they're not bothering you, but they do help me a little bit with the lights here in the studio. And I hope you'll understand that infection's always getting better every single day, so I'm grateful for that. But we do want to zero in on a lot of headlines here today, and my, how very important they are to our lives. Something that I used to be very confused about. When I would read this verse of scripture, I didn't quite understand it, but I'm understanding better now. When Jesus was ready to ascend into heaven, he said, when I return, will I find faith on the earth? Well, there are a couple of aspects of this we're going to consider right now. The first one, Jack, is how Christians around the world really are living today, drifting away from the way the Lord wants us to live. I know you know that. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I've never seen a time like this in my life. I've been preaching for 78 years and I'm going to keep on until I'm 90 years of age and 105 if Jesus <laughs> lets me live. But somebody has to speak up and God has chosen me to be the pit bull of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to defend it till my last breath. And I'm going after one of these, all these groups that mock the word of God. I'm going after the Christians who don't take a stand. Now, is that true? Yeah. False Christ and false prophets found dozens of times in this Bible and they're believers who've turned back to their old ways and sins. Can it happen? You better believe it. The Bible says that Christians can grieve and quench the Holy Spirit in their life. And he coming to me every day now. Oh, what I've been feeling. But what happens when they quench him and grieve him? He says, I give you a spiritual spanking. And he goes on to say, now, if you are living in sin and you don't get spanked, there's a reason for it. Now get ready for the strongest word in the Bible. You are a religious bastard. What? Yeah. In the Bible, yes. Why? That is the secular term of the world. It's not a bad word. It's not a cursing word. It describes one who is not really the son of that father. The woman's been out in a night of sin and she gets this baby. She's not really his. He's a bastard. You got it? And he says, if you're a Christian, and you have claimed to be been born again. And when you were, everything became new. And now you're still depending on that. But you have gone back into sin. Back to the nightclubs. Back to the dance halls. Back to the liquor. Back. You're a bastard. You're not saved. Right. He only takes those to heaven at the rapture. Who have Jesus living in their heart. Now, that takes me to many religions. I'm going to talk Islam tonight because that is the worst. There are 57 of their denominations. I'm going to be saying a lot in this program. And number one in Sharia law is, if you believe, eight times it's found in the Quran Bible, that Jesus is the Son of God, you will burn in hell forever and ever. That immediately puts you out of sight of heaven because the unbelievers will never see the kingdom of God. One of the Ten Commandments. Have no other gods before me. First commandment. No other. No other. There's only one God. There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Which leads me to tell you this. And boy, I'm getting punished already by Satan's crowd. I'm getting rid of all denominations. 9,000 all fighting one another. Blasphemy. I'm creating one group, Christian. 
One term is enough. That's God's term. The religion that the Lord Jesus Christ started and said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am life. No man can come to the Father but by me. Went a little further. The three are one. He draws them to the Father, but the Father draws them to Jesus. No man can come to me except the Father, which has sent him, is drawn to me. All right. This punishment, yes. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We can all fall. And God has a way of replacing us. You know when you get saved, what the promise is? Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy, and I will give you life. But what kind of life? Eternal life. John 3, 16, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. How do you get saved? His only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He didn't say Allah. He didn't say all the other gods. First commandment, no other gods before me except Christ. And you can take my life if you don't like it. Lump it. I'm willing to lay down my life and get the soul in his crown as well as the crown of life, which is when he comes for the rapture. He gives us the rewards. He comes back, sets us up on earth, the kingdom of heaven. And he says to those who've been faithful, no second death possible, and that's the lake of fire. Not possible, not possible to the saved. Now let's go back to that verse. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, only that whosoever believeth on him, him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now the trouble with Pope Francis is he's starting to run with the Muslims. And he's sort of hankering to what they're saying. And we've got a guy as Protestantism too. Our churches are full of hypocrites. And I'm not just talking about Pope Francis. The greatest pope was Pope John Paul, my hero. I love him. Then there's Benedict, the greatest theologian in the Catholic Church. But then this guy comes along. And he says, all atheists can go to heaven. They don't need Jesus. Oh, I'll send you my booklet and prove it. Write for it. The final three popes. And this, the two before with this guy were real Christians, real believers. My heroes. Catholic, Catholics, I've changed my mind. And we're going to put them all together. One group, Christians. And you know what my new motto is? The world for Christ crusades. I'm going to unite them all, and we're going to win the world for Jesus. Oh, Jack, I love that. The world for Jesus. But you know, when you accept the Lord here in the United States or Canada and some of the safer countries, um, you don't have to fear for your life. But right now around the world, they do. Take a look, please, at this first article that I have for you, Iranian court. Oppose prison sentences of two Christian converts. Now, you know why? Because they were involved in house churches, having people come to their homes. Going on, jihadists rape, stone Christian women to death in Syria. These oh, are all my. Islamic background. Jihadists bomb Christian school in Syria, killing four children. You know, accepting the Lord means your life in some places. Jihadists Going on, Islamic terrorists. Vietnam, six-year-old Christian girl beaten into coma for faith in Jesus. Wow. My, oh, my, that's northern Vietnam. And aid worker, Boko Haram killed schoolgirl for refusing, refusing to renounce Christ. And Islamists arrest over kindergarten children massacre plot. Oh, oh. Kill all these children. Here we are Beast. again, Iraqi Archbishop. Extinction is coming for Christians in the Middle East. I can't believe that, can you? In the Middle East, so many Christians are being killed for the cause of Christ. But knowing him, made all the difference in their life. You know, Jack, um, 
that too means so very, very much when they stand before the Lord. There's a special crown given to them, the martyr's crown. Yeah. Is that correct? I'll get to that in a moment, Rexella. First of all, I want to show you why they're being killed, all right? We have the Ten Commandments, and thank God they're wonderful. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's the Islamic God, Allah, as well. Thou shalt have no gods, thou shalt not make any, any graven image or any likeness of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or anything that looks like a godly thing. We don't want idols and statues. Get rid of them. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. God will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. For Jews, that's Saturday. For Christians, it's the first day of the week, Sunday. But most of you have that wrong. You go to church for half hour, an hour, and that's keeping the Sabbath day holy. No, that means on the Sabbath day, you don't run to the dirty movies. You don't run to the beer joints. You don't run to the dance halls. You don't run to the ungodly place of the world. God wants holy Christians. Be holy, for I am holy, is God's command. Honor your father and your mother, and thou shalt not kill. But wait a minute. Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer, and no murderer has eternal life abiding him. Oh, the Bible is so plain. I'll tell you, thou shalt not commit adultery. That's fornication. Among the young people, a night out, and you get into sex sin, then there is adultery. Your marriage vow is broken. God leaves nothing untouched. He's a God of holiness. And we got too many of you Christians living like the devil now. Guess what's going on? 1,600 priests committed sex sin. I'm just not condemning them. 70% of all the Protestant men are into pornography, filthy, dirty movies. Sex magazines. And you think you're going to see God when Jesus comes? You better clean up and clean up fast. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. Oh, I want his home. I want his money out. A bunch of sick Christians. 50% of us gone haywire. Now, what about the Muslims? They vote only four laws. You kill your daughter. It's all for killing. You kill your daughter if she has premarital sex. You kill all homosexuals. You kill all the members of our own religion if they say one word against Allah or Muhammad. And this one, you kill everyone who is not a Muslim in every religion. God help us. And you know what the reward is? Allah says, you kill all these people, I'm going to reward you with 72 virgins to do all the lustful things you want in heaven for all eternity. Oh God forgive you people. Oh, Jack, how clear the Bible is. The Lord tells us how to live, and certainly we need to be listening to the Word of God. That's God speaking when you open the Bible. How good it is to walk with him, listen to him. Well, I wrote a book, Dr. Jack Benippi, Dynamic and Dedicated, A Man and His Mission. I will never forget, the, as I've mentioned so many times on the program, the first time I heard him speak, he was already in the ministry and really dynamic and dedicated. Never, never changed from the moment that I met him. A Man and His Mission. His mission now is to win the world for Christ, Amen. how good it is. Amen. The Lord has laid this on his heart. So please um, write to us or call us and we'll be glad to get this in the mail as soon as we hear from you. Now we're going to be going on with our program here today. We've talked so very, very much about how the world is persecuting the Christians, but they're also persecuting the Jewish people too. Take a look please at this first Headline, we're leaving France because of anti-Semitism. 
my oh my, these dear people were going back to Israel mm -hmm. and were hoping for a better future there. Again, 19% of Americans say small businesses should be able to refuse service to Jews. God forgive them. Can you believe that? That is right here in the United States. I can't believe it. Hamas, MP, Holocaust is a lie, but Hitler was right to hate the Jews. Blasphemy. Oh, my, it is. And again, Hezbollah warns Iran is able to bombard Israel if war started. They're saying, watch out, Israel, because if war starts, Iran can get you. Iran again, folks. All right, the Palestinian Authority. All agreements with Israel will end. Uh, once again, children at Muslim school in Philadelphia sing jihadist songs. I want to just tell you what they're singing. Now, where is that? It's in Philadelphia. We will chop off their heads. We will liberate the sorrowful and exalted Alaska mosque, and we will subject them to eternal torture. I can't believe that. One child wears a T-shirt showing a map of Palestine on which Israel has been eliminated. Oh, please, even though it's a Muslim school, they should not be allowed to sing that kind of songs. My heart goes out. They should be loving other children. All right, Al-Qaeda, a leader, uh, calls for attacks on U.S. and Israeli targets. UK-based Muslim scholars and men basis Israel return to Arabs and want Jerusalem as caliphate capital. Well, you know their goal. They want Jerusalem above anything else. Ukraine, flyer threatening second Holocaust posted on a monument. And here we are once again. Hamas official calls to kill Jews. Friends, you know, my heart really goes out to these people. And then Khomeini predicts demise of Israel and the United States. You know, they're putting us, uh, all Christians, right along with the, the Jewish faith. They want to eliminate us. And then Israel will strike first, not wait to be attacked. And, of course, that's Prime Minister Netanyahu. That's defense. Speaking there. Well, that's defending their country. And certainly they have a right to do that. But we need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We need to pray for Christians. We need to pray for Jewish people around the world. Um, Jack, the Bible predicted that, didn't it? That they would be hated of all nations. Oh, folks, many months ago I started with this text but never explained it. Now I'm explaining it and show you where it's found. Again, Matthew 24, verses 3 to 18. As Jesus sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, Jesus, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of your coming? Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I'm Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not trouble for all these things must come to pass. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, shall kill you, and you shall be hated all nations for my name's sake. Then shall many be offended, shall betray another, and shall hate one another, and iniquity shall abound. Iniquity shall abound, sin, and the love of many shall wax cold. That's what all these priests and all these sinners have done in all these places with all their sex sins and all their dope and going to the movies and running in beer halls and getting drunk. It's here. Christianity has lost 50% of its membership worldwide, all nations. And when this happens, he says, then they will preach the gospel of the kingdom. Hallelujah. That's the return of the king. And Rick I is going to quote right now the Lord's Prayer because you'll find who the king and all of the three are in this. Oh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, thank you, Rexon. Now get that last part. Thine is the kingdom. That's the Father. It's his kingdom. Our Father wishes in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. But the Father says, I've got someone appointed, the one I appointed to die for the sins of the world. And now he is the king of the kings and lord of the lords to rule this glorious kingdom from Jerusalem. That's how much God loves the Jews. You Palestinians and all you folks that hate the Jews, you're in trouble with God. When Jesus comes back, that's the next part of this thing. It is called the rapture. They get all the rewards. And after seven years of getting their rewards, the war has been going on in the face of the earth, as I said last week. And on the seventh year, the last day, Christ returns, the second coming of Christ, with millions from heaven. Everyone has ever been saved. And when they get to the earth, he says, here we are in Jerusalem. It's going to be your home. We're going to set this holy city, which I've created, over the top of the old city. And you're going to live there for 1,000 years, a millennium. And you Jewish preachers, 144,000 are going to go to all the world and preach the gospel of the kingdom because salvation is of the Jews, Jesus said. Oh, did you get it? It's the Father's kingdom. Christ is the one who rules at the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And the Holy Spirit brings all of the joy. You Pentecostals are going to love this. Why? <laughs> the ninefold fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. And that's what's going to make heaven so wonderful. Well, you know, Jack, you said a moment ago about Israel. I just want to give you one more article uh, for you to look at. I love this article, Israel's Future. God's not rejecting the Jewish people and has a glorious plan for Israel's future. In fact, God guarantees Israel's survival forever after its Messiah returns to establish his eternal kingdom on earth. Amen, oh, eternal that. kingdom on earth. It's going to be transferred. Get ready because the Holy Spirit this week, my prayer time said, it's about to happen. Amen. Well, we're going to go on here now. Oh my, oh my, with everything going on in the world as it is and shaping up like it is, we need to be saying, oh, your coming is so very near, Lord Amen. Jesus. But we need to be ready. That's for sure. Jack pointed out how many of us are drifting away, not going to church anymore. We're not talking about the Lord anymore. We're not living for the Lord. But the most important thing is that you have the Lord in your heart. Have you ever asked the Lord to come into your heart? I've told you this story before. A young girl watching our program had a gun. She was going to take her life. No hope. And she said, I watched her program, Rexella. And I realized there could be hope in my life if I'd open my heart to the Lord. I prayed that prayer. I didn't have to use the gun. Jesus came in and gave me a new life. Jack's going to pray the prayer right now. They'll make all the difference in your life accepting the Lord in your life. Jack, would you please pray? Oh, I've already said it, but I'm full of praise. Why? Because the first commandment, as I said earlier, states, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And who is the God we're to honor? The Bible says his name shall call, be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. No other way, no other way. Forget all the religions or forget all your denominations. This is the program that's for Christ, the world for Christ's crusade. Now, join it, Father. I come to thee in Jesus' name. Thank you for sending your son 
Thank you, Holy Spirit, for enlightening our eyes today. And now, Jesus, come into my heart. You're the way, the only way. I receive you, Jesus, as my personal Savior today. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen, Jack. Isn't it wonderful that you don't have to uh, do recite certain things, but just open yeah. your heart to the Lord? If you prayed that prayer with Jack, please write to me. Let me know. I'd just love to hear from you. And I'll be sending you this little book at First Steps in a New Direction. How good it is to walk with the Lord in these troublesome days. You know, we are living in troublesome days, aren't we? In fact, uh, you know, Jack, I want, once in a while, I get sort of filled up with some of the letters that we get saying, I found no hope in this life until I opened my heart to the Lord. I was watching your program. Mm -hmm. So be praying, will you, friends, for others out there who prayed the prayer. And if you prayed the prayer, write to me. I want to hear from you. First steps in a new direction will be in the mail as soon as I hear from you. Remember to ask for your free copy of the booklet, First Steps, when you write. Our address, once again, is Jack Penneby Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. And now, whoa, our wonderful offer of the week, Dr. Jack Penneby, Dynamic and Dedicated. And I think that you can tell if you've been watching this program, those are two very descriptive words of who he is, dynamic, and he Praise is dedicated the Lord. serving the Lord. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. My friend to order Dynamic and Dedicated. And oh, my, my, what a book. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free. 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of 1995 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of 1995 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Oh, please do make the call or write to us. This is not a forever offer. I'm not quite sure how much longer we'll be able to offer it to you, but Dynamic and Dedicated, it was on my heart. I had to get it into a book all about Jack Van Impey, a man and his mission. You know, life is so very fragile, isn't it? The other day someone said, handle with care. No, no, no. Life is fragile. Handle with prayer. Amen. We need to be praying uh -huh. every single day Amen. that God will guide us and direct us. We we'll look forward to being in your home again next week. Till then, remember, God cares for you. So do we. So very, very much. Bye-bye. The preceding program was sponsored by the partners of Jack Vanapie Ministries.